Friqueros y friqueras, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estáis? Y bienvenidos a un nuevo vídeo en este canal en el que vamos a reaccionar a este vídeo de GameSpot sobre 10 cosas que deberíais de saber antes de jugar al Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, la segunda parte del remake del Final Fantasy VII, en este caso pues, desarrollada por Square Enix y que ya está disponible para jugar este día jueves 29 de febrero de 2024. Ya hemos reaccionado a vídeos de ese estilo, pues justamente el día antes de, del lanzamiento de, del juego, ¿no? El que se habla, del que se habla, ¿no? En, en estos vídeos. Y en este caso, pues toca este Final, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, ¿no? Que en este caso, pues es el lanzamiento más esperado de este mes de febrero, que justamente se lanza el último día del mes en sí. Ahora pasamos a marzo y ya pues vendrán otros lanzamientos, ¿no? Así que pues vamos a ver, en este caso, pues cositas, ¿no? Que datos rápidos del juego en sí, ¿no? Y bueno, alguna cosita más, ya veremos a ver qué se comenta en este vídeo, ¿no? En este caso, para que tengáis que tenerlas en cuenta, ¿no? Antes de jugar al juego en sí. Así que venga, vamos a darle caña, pero antes, como siempre, os voy a pedir que si queréis apoyar el contenido que subo en este canal, que dejáis vuestro like, suscribiros al canal en sí si no lo habéis hecho ya, activar la campanita de notificaciones para no perderos ningún vídeo... Y en la descripción os dejaré, como siempre, los enlaces de mis redes sociales y de los últimos vídeos que tengo subidos en el canal para que echéis un vistacillo a lo último que he estado subiendo. Muchas gracias por vuestro apoyo, como siempre. Así que, sin más dilación, le damos en 3, 2... Uno, Final play. Fantasy VII Rebirth is finally here, and we know you're champing at the bit to play it. However, before you get started, we wanted to impart onto you some wisdom before you ventured into Junon, Costa del Sol, and the myriad of other locales featured in the game. So, without further ado, here are 10 things we wish we knew before playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Vamos allá. Uf, la música. Our first suggestion is one that is hopefully made irrelevant in a future patch, if it hasn't been fixed already. The sound mixing in Rebirth is frankly quite horrible, with the music in particular fluctuating wildly. Vale. Imagino que meterán un parche, ¿no? Como ha dicho. Everyone on the team who has played the game during the review vale, period claro, has said que this was an juego. issue for them. So we really fallos. hope Square does address this. But until then, we recommend you go into the audio suyo, settings ¿no? and lower the music. I set mine to 7 and found that to be a much better experience, although it's still not perfect. It's also probably for the best you no, play so with subtitles todo, so you don't miss que... out on any dialogue. We have a full video of Está tips just bien. on the combat done by Max, the guy who does our excellent Zelda videos. He's really good at it, so definitely go give that a watch after you're done with this video. But in the meantime, Max gave a really good tip for this video, and that is to change a setting for combo targeting. By default, it is set to fixed, and what that means is once you start attacking an enemy, you are locked onto them until the combo is finished and can't switch to another enemy unless you break the combo by dodge rolling. By switching combo targeting to free, this allows you to switch targets whenever you want. We find this added flexibility makes a huge difference when dealing with lots of foes at once. So give it a try vale, and vale. see if you like it. While you are in the options menu, I also recommend messing with the camera distance in battle. There are three levels that it can be set to. I don't think the camera default is bad by any means, but who knows? You might just prefer seeing more of the battlefield, particularly during battles with lots of enemies. Okay, that was a lot of menus, so let's get out of those and back into the game. In fact, one of my biggest tips would be to learn and set your shortcuts so you are spending less time on menus. Ironically, this requires spending more time on menus de, up front. De, Under game, combat digamos, settings, you can set three party teams, load out, and then while exploring, de open the command menu and press L1 and R1 to swap between them on the fly. Y, back bueno, in combat settings, you can also set shortcuts for abilities, spells, items, and even limit breaks for each character. There are four programmable shortcuts, and some characters, like Cloud and Tifa, have an additional four shortcuts you can set while in the air. You pull up these shortcuts by holding L1, but guess what? If you tap L2 or R2 while holding L1, you'll switch over to your party member's shortcuts, letting you activate them while still controlling the character. This is really useful if you want to avoid using tactical mode as much as possible and play combat in real time. These next tips are all quality of life menu and battle options that were in Remake but were really easy to miss in that game. And when you know it, they are easy to miss here as well. So let's go over them. 
The assess materia is by far the most important materia in the game, and you should always have at least one equipped on your party at all times. That's because assess is how you see the enemy's weaknesses, but even more important, what pressures them. This knowledge is critical to winning combat unless you want to do it the slow and painful way. But remembering these details for every enemy is unlikely, and having to redo assess each time you want to see their info screen is annoying, right? At least that's what I thought until I realized you can press the touchpad to pull up the info screen for an enemy at any time if you have already assessed them. Hmm. The game tells you this only once, and I'm embarrassed it took me so yeah. long to notice it, okay, so let my pain okay. be your gain. While in the materia and equipment screen, press the touchpad to open the set for all menu. This shows the materia slots for all characters at once and lets you easily swap them between each other. It's a huge time saver. One of the main ways you explore in Rebirth is by riding Chocobo. At first, they might feel a little unwieldy, so here are a few tricks to better control your feathered friends so you don't end up crashing into a wall. There are two main ways to run with the Chocobo. There's pressing down with L3 once to trot and once more for a full speed sprint. The other way is by holding R2 to manually speed up the Chocobo and slow it down by letting go. Generally, longer distances, the L3 method is best, but for smaller technical areas, R2 gives better control. While turning left or right, pressing and holding the circle button will make the Chocobo drift quickly in either direction. This can be nice to make sharp turns, but hmm. depending on the terrain can be quite unwieldy. Max came up with an unorthodox method we'll refer to as the kick technique. By releasing the stick, then pressing in the direction you want and kicking at the same time, you can make the chocobo stop and instantly turn in the direction you'd like. This looks strange, but for how much chocobo riding you'll do in tight spaces, this is extremely useful, especially since you also retain your momentum and keep sprinting. When dismounting, you're also able to choose which side to dismount by simply holding the left stick in that direction. In situations when there's no room to maneuver and your bird friend is taking up all the space, this can save a lot of headache. There is also a subtle but significant advantage while riding Chocobo for material gathering. In Rebirth, you're going to be picking up lots of materials off the ground, and it's kind of annoying to have to manually pick them up one at a time. Well, if you're riding on Chocobo back, you only have to press triangle once and you gather all the materials in one area. Much more efficient. You can also kick boxes with the square button, but also anything destructible like these boxes can just be sprinted through to pick up any goodies. Rebirth is loaded with maybe the most mini games I've ever seen. The team at Square Enix is giving the folks behind Like a Dragon a run for their money. Keeping track of them all can be a bit difficult, but there is a way to view your various accomplishments through the game. In Chapter 7, you can start the quest, The Saga of the Seaside Inn, for everyone's favorite Tifa stan, Johnny. You actually won't be able to finish the quest until Chapter 9. I won't spoil the details of this quest, as it's quite funny and worth experiencing on your own, but completing it will reward you with Johnny's treasure trove. This is a collection of trophies, figurines, and other curiosities you earn from completing the highest rank in minigames, buying items at the Golden Saucer, bueno, and other pasar, miscellaneous cuando... tasks you do throughout the game. Estás There are 88 in all to earn, which is no small feat. None of us here at GameSpot have Eso collected everything yet, which means we ahí. don't know what vez. is inside Johnny's secret. Secret chest, but I'm sure you completionists out there will unlock it in no time. Speaking of mini games, Rebirth's crowning achievement is without a doubt Queen's Blood, an excellent fast paced card game you'll play throughout your journey across Gaia. According to Rebirth's co director Naoki Hamaguchi, they had a team dedicated just to working on Queen's Blood, and they spent a whole year developing it. It really shows in the level of depth and strategy available. This was one of the many interesting things discussed in our interview with Hamaguchi that Tomor and Lucy did, so go check out that if you're interested. But back to Queen's Blood. If you're someone who loves playing card games but doesn't really enjoy the process of building a deck, good news. The game does have the option to use pre-built decks. As you earn and buy more cards, more decks become available, and some of vale. these are really good. 
One of my favorites is For the Greater Good, a deck that's based around destroying your own cards to activate abilities on other cards and boost them. It's a really powerful and super fun deck to play with. As a test, I tried playing against opponents only using the pre-builds available to you at that point in the game, and yes, you can achieve victory this way, meaning it is possible to play Queen's Blood without ever building a deck of your own, although it might get a little rough in some spots. Pre-built decks are also a good learning tool for bueno, teaching you the different de styles cartas. of cards and how they work together, and then you can modify these decks if you wish once you're more comfortable. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found these little tips helpful. Remember to check out Max's combat guide if you want more in-depth tips on that, as well as our interview with co-director Naoki Hamaguchi. But that's not all. We released a bunch of content leading up to the release of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, including a full story recap of FF7 Remake and an explainer on just who the hell is Zack Fair. And we're going to have a ton of content rolling out after the release of the game as well. So for everything Final Fantasy, make sure to stay tuned right here to GameSpot. Bueno, pues ha, nos han, en este caso, mostrado estos consejos, estos tips, ¿no? De, para el Final, Final, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, ¿no? También, obviamente, contándolo desde su... Eh, pues que... Desde la propia experiencia, ¿no? Que hayan conseguido, eh, en este caso, de lo que han jugado, ¿no? Del juego en sí, ¿no? De lo que llevan avanzado en el juego. Así que... Pues digamos que son cositas ¿no? que han querido transmitir y que realmente algunas cosas sí que las veo bastante servibles, ¿no? bastante útiles, así que pues no sé cómo lo veréis vosotros, o sea que ya eso lo dejáis en los comentarios, vuestras opiniones sobre esos tips y también podéis dejar por aquí pues si habéis seguido alguno de los que hemos visto en este vídeo y si os ha funcionado o no, si os ha parecido útil. Y hasta aquí mi reacción a este vídeo de 10 tips o 10 consejos que ha querido proporcionar GameSpot para aquellos que, pues, que quieran jugar al reverse y que, pues, que ellos creen que necesitáis saberlo, ¿no? En este caso para los que vayan a jugar ahora a este juego, pues justamente este vídeo os puede servir. Así que pues si os ha gustado el vídeo, dejad un buen like, suscribiros al canal en sí si no lo habéis hecho ya, activar la campanita de notificaciones y en la descripción os dejaré como siempre los enlaces de mis redes sociales y de los últimos vídeos que tengo subidos en el canal. Muchas gracias por vuestro apoyo. ¡Hasta la próxima!